first service was actually the seventh anniversary service of Powerhouse Ministries. And since then, I have not looked back. From the first time I stepped a foot in this place, I have never missed any service in this place, apart from days that are outside the country. It's been a great and wonderful experience the past 18 years. Well, the major influencer for um, staying with Powerhouse or remaining in Powerhouse, the number of things. Number one was the attention that I initially got when I joined the church, right from Pastor Bernard himself, our senior pastor, um, Reverend Oscar and the wife, um, Auntie Fiba, Pastor Mansa. They gave me a lot of attention, um, not only in church, but um, my day-to-day -day life, calling me. I remember Reverend Oscar and Aunt Sandra will call frequently to ensure that I join their cell. I was living in Lashibi then, so I would join their cell meeting, and every Wednesday I would receive a call from um, Reverend Oscar, and sometimes even before the day of the cell and all of that. So that greatly influenced my, my decision, the love that I experienced. Um, when I joined, greatly influenced my decision to be a part and start a whole new life different from what I had. The first Sunday, actually, um, I must say that I didn't hear much in church because I, I, was, I was recovering from a hangover then. <laughs> so, um, really, nothing, nothing much entered. But the love I experienced after that, and I don't know what... Um, Pastor Bernard saw in me, but the attention that he gave and the fact that he was willing to teach even in, in personal times with me um, made me decide to remain here. Of course, my brother and the wife also, um, I was here just to please them. <laughs> and now look at me 80 years later, I'm still here as one of the senior ministers of the church. I was thrilled by Pastor Bernard's teachings how practical these teachings were um, to our day-to-day -day life. I realized that Christianity wasn't what I had initially thought it was. I could live like a Christian every day of my life and, and had answers to practical challenge, challenges that I had. You know, so for me, I thought that this was a place to be because our our lives were being fashioned in a way that was easy for us to remain Christians in this place. So I would say number one was the fact that I experienced great love when I first joined the church and the fact that people were willing to spend time to help me in my day-to-day -day life. Number two is the teachings of of Pastor Bernard, I was really thrilled at how practical these teachings were in empowering lives. And, and then um, the, third, the third reason is the fact that I realized this church was more people-centered, was concerned more about the welfare of people than anything else. And I believe that that's what Christianity is, is about. The lives of people would have to improve. The lives of people would have to... Uh, 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 a testimony of good Christian life is that the lives around you should have greatly improved and developed. My journey with PMI, that's interesting. I started off, as I said earlier, as somebody who was in church suffering from a hangover, trying to please my brother and the wife by attending an anniversary service. And two years later, I found myself enrolled in a Bible school. <laughs> That was I mean, from coming in as, as a, a I don't want, I wasn't a drunkard but I was drunk that Sunday. <laughs> you know it was, it was interesting. So two years later, I enrolled in Bible school. Initially, my the the reason for joining the Bible school was to become more proficient in the Bible, but I immediately understood that in, in powerhouse, Bible school training is not for just knowledge of the Bible, but you are trained to be sent out on missions. So I go with the prog program immediately. And um, here, I'm, here am I, 18 years later, as one of the senior ministers of, of Powerhouse responsible for the Bowie branch. What sets PMI apart? Um, I think first of all is the, 
is, is the fact that we have a strong and resilient leader. Um, Pastor Bernard has been a great leader, exemplary one. He lives what he preaches. And through the, the various storms of life, being in the areas where we minister, uh, it's, not, it's not been easy at all, but he's been very strong in, 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 in times of challenges. He's, he's, not, he's not one that would give up a fight. <laughs> So for me, um, that, that is one of the things that have set, set us apart. Many churches have not survived in the areas that we've, we, we, we have been ministering. And, and this is because the man at the helm of affairs does not, doesn't give up. No matter the challenge, we will definitely become victors. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so that's one of the things that set us apart. I think that there's great discipline and order in this church. Um, I go to many churches now. Increasingly, it's difficult for me to attend any other church service because the order and discipline that we bring to bear in this place, most people take for granted. Okay, so any one that enters and, and, and people come here and they are amazed at what we can do in a place like Choco and Manprobi, the order we can set. Because when you get outside the church premises and into the lives of, of the community, there's probably an, a lot of disorder which people expect will translate to how they behave in church. But ch church is completely different. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited to say that there are very few, very, very few churches that um, have established the level of discipline and order that, that we've, we have in this place. And as, as, as the administrator of the church also, I've had the opportunity to visit a lot of other churches and look at other churches and how they operate. And I can confidently say that discipline and order is one of the things that greatly sets us apart. The third thing is that uh, Pastor, Pastor Bernard is a great teacher amongst many other things that he is. So the word of God is taught in practical ways that empowers the people. The people understand that uh, don't just come to church and pray against malaria. <laughs> malaria is caused by the mosquito. By a, it's a way of life. It's a disease that is caused by a way of life. So if you change your way of life, you will not suffer certain things. You don't need to now come and hold prayer meetings for certain things. And for me, those, those things were very important, especially in the areas that we are in community where people um, are superstitious and people would, for lack of knowledge and for lack of understanding would 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 give or would, would attribute everything else to spiritual things so it it is important that the bible is taught in a way or scripture is taught in a way that would ensure that people understand the principles of god and the power of of god Again, I think the strong work ethic set, set us apart. Um, we are one of the few churches that has job description for every leader in the church, um, no matter the level of leadership. From the lowest level to the top, every single leader has a job description. Uh, everyone is clear in their mind what is expected of them. And again, um, our leader is one that would not it does not accept excuses for anything no matter what you, are. you can't even give an excuse that you are sick or you are not well <laughs> when something has to be done it has to be done i mean <laughs> so those are things that have set us apart over these years and have made us a, a, a beacon of light in the community where um sometimes people say that there is there is no hope but indeed we have brought hope to this community and we believe that in the next few years a greater development and great there will be greater change in every community that we find ourselves